Hi, I'm Kip from kiphakes.tv and in today's video, I will be showing you how I'm installing this ROG Strix LC240 RGB liquid cooler into my computer. So uh, let's roll titles. So first off, I want to apologize, and it's probably never good to start a video with an apology, but I did promise myself that I would try and get this video filmed over Christmas, but I hit a little bit of a snag. And uh, basically, it was down to this. This is an RGB converter, and I will go into a bit more detail as to what this is and uh, why it's delayed things so much. Um, but yeah, that is the reason. I'm not being lazy, well I have. Yeah, so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna take out the Ryzen stock cooler, which has served me well, and uh, fit in this gorgeous, chunky, bad boy, AIO, all-in-one liquid cooler. And uh, yeah, I'm a bit nervous because I've never fitted one of these before. So uh, yeah, I guess what we need to do is get the computer unplugged, get it onto the table, and uh, try and work out what we're going to do. So before we start, I guess we need a few things. First of all, we need a computer with slightly inferior air cooling. Then we need our shiny new AIO. Then we need some tools. And then I've got a bit of alcohol to remove the thermal compound from the CPU because we'll put some new stuff on. So uh, there we go, that's all we need. Well, no, actually, that's not all we need. There's something else we needed and this is why the video has been delayed. This is what we needed. This is an RGB converter. You see, it turns out that ASUS have got two different RGB systems. So this motherboard has got a, a 12 volt RGB system, and that's fine. That uses the AuraSync, which I love, and that syncs up with my keyboard and mouse. But this is also AuraSync, but it uses five volt addressable RGB, and uh, the two systems aren't compatible. So what we need is one of these, and this is an RGB converter, and it basically makes the two things talk to each other. So this is an extra little box that we've got to install into the computer to get the fancy RGB working across the two setups. That's a bit frustrating. So uh, yeah, let's get the case off, get the old cooler off, and uh, go from there. Thankfully, it's nice and easy to get the glass side panel off this case. And get to the goodies. Well, I think we're definitely gonna need a dust at some point. So first job is to get this off and uh, have a little clean. So let's do that. Right, okay, so we have got the RGB cable there. And unplug that. Right, so we've got to unclip this guy at the back. That lifts up. There we go. And that is our old cooler removed. Bye bye, cooler. Bye bye. So yeah, we've got a bit of uh, thermal compound smeared around the CPU, so we'll just give that a quick clean with some IPA and that will be right as rain. There we go, that's looking a lot cleaner. So next up we need to remove these because this is where the AIO is going to mount onto. So uh, we need to unscrew these. Perfect, now that's out, and it's released this plate that goes behind the back of the case. So now we need to look at the mounting for the AIO, and also there's a few bits of thermal paste there we'll get rid of. Right, let's get on with it. Right, so we need to get this guy ready to go into the computer, so uh, you've seen me unbox it, so I won't go into too much detail. And if you haven't seen me unbox it, then uh, it's in another video, and I'll pop a link up to it in the corner 
because we're using a Ryzen processor with the AM4 layout, that's what we need to set this up for. And I think it's already set up for an Intel processor. So uh, we need to fix that. And how do we fix that? I hear you ask. We need to change this mounting plate. So uh, I will do that. Right, so I need to turn this clockwise and take off the Intel mounting plate and then put this on anti-clockwise. There we go. Cool. Now this is the pre-applied thermal paste, so uh, don't get that on your table. <laughs> And now we need to install the AM4 standoff screws onto our motherboard. So uh, let's do that. Right, so this backplate guy needs to go back underneath the processor and I need to install these standoffs. So the standoffs go with the bottom, chunky bottom, into the motherboard. And you screw them clockwise. Now it's best to do them in a crisscross fashion just so the pressure is evenly applied and then just move from corner to corner tightening them up perfect nice and tight right so now it is time to get these fans on now I'm thinking of having them like that which is the way that you should do it but I'm also thinking about the cables. Now I've got the cables sat at the back because they will go through my cable management holes. Now the fans have got two connectors. They've got the standard fan connector and then they've got the addressable five volt RGB connector. But yeah, I'm gonna arrange them like that just so the cable management goes into the back and there aren't cables everywhere. And you fix them onto the motherboard with these very long screws. Now you don't need any washers, it's just the screw. So uh, I'm gonna get all eight screws in and remember to work in a crisscross fashion. Wait a, wait a second. This isn't gonna be the back of the case. This is gonna be the back of the case. <sighs> I need to reroute my cables. <laughs> oh, as I say, I'm not an expert. Right, let's put the cables back through this way. And with that, <laughs> we are done. Nice fans installed. Now, don't do these up too tight because there's quite the gap between the top and the bottom and it can bend the fan. So just do it hand tight and then just a little half turn and then you're okay. So uh, yeah, I mentioned that there are splitters included so that will take your two fan connectors down to just one that can plug onto your motherboard. Perfect. And then we have similar for the ARGB connectors. That will take the two connectors of the fan into one. Now uh, there are more than two connectors here. So if you've got like some LED strips or whatever, you can plug those into it. So that's worth noting. But, uh, I'm just going to be plugging the two fans into it. Um, but anyway, we need to get this inside the case. So uh, let's go. So when it comes to mounting the radiator and fans, you've got two options really in this case. They can either go here down the front or up here up the top. And um, I'm going to put mine up here, I think, just because there's fans already here and I think it would be better to have the hot air blowing out of the top and through the grill. So that's what we're going to do in theory and hopefully it will all work. Right, okay, now it's time to get this mounted under here. So um, that should be fun. Now you use these smaller screws. Let's see if we can show you them. Okay. So use the smaller screws with the washers and they go down into your case with the radiator on the other side. So uh, hopefully it will work. What I'm gonna do first is thread the cables through the back, just so they're out of the way, because it's easier to do it now than 
when the radiator's in position. Now we've got some I.O. cables here. Yeah, the CPU power connector's fouling as well. So I need to pull that through a little bit more. Right, so now it's a case of screwing it in. And again, I'm gonna work from corner to corner. Just gonna hand tighten them to start with. Now this does seem like a big and scary job, but it's really not. I think the scariest bit has been removing the existing CPU core. One more screw, and then we just get to tighten them. And you know, whack the dust cover on. You'd hardly know it was there. Right, now is the time to get this in there. Right now is the moment I've not been looking forward to. <laughs> I don't know why, I'm so nervous. We have got to get the pump and the cooler plate onto the processor. So, cooler plate and pump, processor. Cooler plate, processor, cooler, anyway, right. So, I think it goes a little something like this. That looks about right. And then we've got to screw it in with the thumb screws. These are the aforementioned thumb screws. So there's been a common theme through this. Go from corner to corner and apply even amounts of pressure. I think the idea is to make good thermal contact and not to screw it down into the center of the earth. Better tech Uber would have removed the graphics card, but we know I'm not a very good tech YouTuber. So this has got two connectors on it. It has this one, which is for the, uh, it either goes on the AIO pump connector if you've got one on your motherboard, which I do down there, or it can go on the CPU fan connector of your motherboard. Um, it really depends, but yeah, I'm going to plug it in on the AIO, AIO pump. And then we have got this cable. Now this is essentially a micro USB cable that plugs into a spare USB 2 header on your computer's motherboard. So mine are down there. So uh, yeah, I've got to uh, plug some cables in now. Let's plug that AIO pump connector in. Perfect. Okay, so you might notice something's missing and that thing is the graphics card. I couldn't quite get the micro USB connector into there. So the graphics card had to come out there was no other option. Anyway, now I can get the micro USB 2 connector in there. And to help you, the widest bit goes at the top. Right, let's get the graphics card back in. Yeah, it could do with a clean anyway. So uh, let's give it a clean and pop it back in. Right, so now we need to plug this into a spare USB 2 port on the motherboard. Let's do that. Dun, 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 oh my God, it's so dusty. Well, we'll worry about that later. Right, so these are keyed, so they'll only go one way. Perfect. There we go, that's plugged in. So let's have a little chat about this guy. This is the RGB converter, and it helpfully converts ARGB and RGB into just one standard thing. So basically, my motherboard has a AuraSync 12 volt LED output, and my AIO and my lovely radiator fans use ARGB, which is a different system. So this converts it. And this is the little guy. So uh, let's take the sticker off. So yeah, these are a little bit difficult to get hold of quickly. You can get them from China, but obviously stuff from China takes time. So what have we got here? Now at the bottom, we've got a connector that looks a bit strange, and that is because it is for this. Now this has a, a SATA power connector on, 
because it needs to get five volts to supply it. And it's also got the um, RGB terminal that will plug into my motherboard. And there's the connector that goes onto this box. And then around the case, we've got connectors for a, a 12 volt RGB. And then we've got the connector for the five volt RGB. Now there are two different types of five volt RGB. And I think this is the one we need to use for the AIO. So uh, yeah, and it is uh, magnetic and it does come with sticky pads as well. So basically, this is from the radiator fans and that will plug into here, like so. And then, and this will go into a spare SATA power cable and this will plug into my motherboard. So uh, rather than go through the rat's nest of my cable management, I'm gonna get it all plugged in and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will work. Right, we just got one last thing to plug in and that is this. This is for the fans. So uh, that goes in up here somewhere. This is tighter than a nun's habit now. Well, after a ridiculous amount of time and a lot of swearing, that is in place. Oh man, right. So in theory, I'm allowed to remove this now. Should we power it up? I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous about this. Right, so the motherboard's got power. Let's give it a go. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. Yes! It lives! Oh, man. That is super cool. Let me just turn this light off over here and hopefully that'll... There we go. Oh, it's alive. That looks amazing. I'm so pleased with that. You know, it's all in sync with the front fans. And I guess once it's on, installed on the computer, I'll need to uh, set up the Aura Sync side of it, but that is gorgeous. I'm so happy. Perfect. Right, well, I'm gonna get the side back on and uh, we'll have a little chat about it. I mean, it's actually all gone pretty well, to be honest with you. It took a bit longer than I planned, largely because I was filming it all and I have to adjust cameras and stuff like that, but that's my fault. Um, yeah, it was pretty easy to install. I didn't, have, I didn't have any real problems with the installation. It was a bit fiddly in places, especially getting on that uh, fan connector at the top there. But you know, this is the first time I've installed an AIO and it went pretty smoothly, really. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a third video which shows the software side of things and also how much it calls the computer itself and if it makes any difference to the stock cooler. I hope it does, because you know, that's a lot of money for not a lot of difference, but we'll, we'll see. So uh, yeah, if you make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the alert, I'll put that video up in a week or so. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it performs. Um, but that's about it. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be back soon for some more vlogging fun. See ya.